All right, we're looking at <clears throat> actually, we're going to start at verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. And here, as we get ready to read this, he is talking specifically to us so that we know who we are. And knowing who we are means then we know how to live, how to express who we are. And before we read this, you know, I understand and you understand that the enemy comes to do three things. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and the enemy comes to destroy. There are many things that he comes to steal. He is not just stealing your stuff. He is out to steal your identity so that you don't... Uh, identify with scripture at the level that it's been written and assigned to us as Christians. So all through scripture, we have identity statements that are being made on who we are so that we walk according to who we are. And the enemy is constantly trying to steal our identity so we don't walk based on who we are but rather on what he is using people to say about you so when you have people that are criticizing you deconstructing who you are instead of constructively building you up there's nothing wrong with criticism. What's wrong with it is when it's deconstructive. When people are deconstructively speaking to you, it has the ability to make you identify with what they are saying. And as long, the longer that we hear these destructive criticisms, the more those seeds are watered and begin to... Uh, show up in our attitude, in our heart, in our, in our mouth, because it enters into our ears, enters into our mind, enters into our heart, and comes out of our mouth. And so we have to be careful, and I'm sure we are, but we have to be very careful on uh, what we say to each other, what you say to your children, what your children say to you, what you say to your wife or your, your husband. Also knowing, though, that you are not what your parents said about you. You are not who your parents said you would be. If it was deconstructive, it wasn't meant for your good. It was meant to steal from you. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We, we wrestle against the enemy who is always planning to um, steal. And if he can steal your identity and cause you to think lesser of yourself than who you are, then you will not think you are able to stand in the evil day. We are in the evil day. We, we've been in the evil day since... Jesus left the earth. <laughs> it didn't just it didn't just start uh, because we showed up. We've been in the evil day for uh, you know centuries, decades, and here we are having to contend with the enemy. And as I spoke before, it is such a mind game because if he can convince you in your thinking of who you are not, then you will, be, you will begin to allow those things to enter into your heart 
and you allow that to come out of your mouth. When that comes out of your mouth, my God, that is when we begin to plant seeds that cause things to grow in our garden and around our, in our environment. And we begin to see what's been placed in our heart coming to life. There's no reason to wonder where it's coming from. It's coming from our heart because it came through our head because it, someone spoke it and the enemy used somebody to do something or speak something and cause you to think lesser of yourself. And so when we look at this scripture, he is giving us identity statements in the very first uh, uh, three words. He says in verse 10, finally, be strong. This is a word that means strength. It means uh, to be enabled. You're not strong in your parents. You're not strong in your spouse. You're not strong because of your finances. You're not strong because of your employment you're not strong because of your status. We are to be strong in the Lord. We are to be bold in the Lord. We are to know that our strength is being increased because of him. And so he, he makes, he, he gives us clarification on where we should be thinking. How should we be thinking? We should be thinking about being strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. This word might is a familiar word because he uses it with Gideon when he tells Gideon to that you are a mighty man of valor. And then he says, go in his might, saying, go in the might of the Lord. You are mighty, go in that might. Identify with being a mighty person and go in that walk in that idealism, which is if I am mighty, then I walk as one with might. If I am rich, I walk as one with riches. Because you're wealthy. If I am successful, I walk as one with, I identify with what he has said about me. We find that with Gideon, he has to identify with this new revelation of who he is. That you're a mighty man of valor. And here, in Ephesians 6.10, he is saying, finally, after everything else that I've told you about how to act, how to perceive uh, your family, your children, how your children should act, how wives and husbands should act one another, to, towards one another. After all I've said to you, finally, this is where you should be. You should be strong in the Lord. And therefore, in his strength, because you are strong. Identify as one who is strong, full of strength, that you are empowered. We've been talking about going after what is yours, going after what he has taken, whether it's your health, whether it's your peace, whether it's your strength, whether he's sending uh, sickness or disease in, into your house or into your temple, whether you've been dealing with something for a short period of time or a long period of time, allowing, uh, allowing uh, uh, a wrong environment to remain and be sustained in your life and causing fruit to diminish, causing roots to dry up, causing our lives to be sitting in dry places, no, 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 no. Getting a no in your spirit and getting a no in your heart so you get a no coming out of your mouth 
that says, no, I am strengthened in his might because I am strong in the Lord. This is almost saying uh, you are under the umbrella of his strength. If you want to picture it, it's like his strength is over you. You're being strong under that umbrella of the Lord. And because of that, you are able to walk in the strength of his might. When the enemy would come in and desire to steal, to take, and to cause demise in your life, whether he's doing it psychologically, because he tries the hardest to do it psychologically. You know, we think sometimes having accidents and dealing with body bodily injury or uh, other things is is his his biggest way. No, his biggest way is to deal with how we think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He knows it. You know it. God knows it. We all know it. How you think, how you think about your yourself. If David was unconvinced of his ability and strength in the Lord, he would not have picked up five smooth stones, put them in a sling and slung that thing at the giant because he would not have identified with who God said he was. He would not have identified with what he has already achieved. He would have thought lesser of himself and therefore would not have been able to accomplish what he accomplished. That's why the enemy wants to convince you that you are not strong, that you are not full of might, and that you don't have strength for every day to do what he is, what uh, the Father is asking and requiring of you to do. If Moses had thought to himself, I can't do this, and we know he did, I can't do this because I can't talk. Kind of like me today. But he was stumbling. He had an issue. <clears throat> he had an issue. <clears throat> Where his words wouldn't come together. And he asked that Aaron, somebody else could talk for him. That's how the Lord made it happen. Because he wasn't confident in talking. So when he says, you need to lead a million plus people into a 40 day journey and get there and I'll go with you. He needs to know that he can get there. He needs to know that God's going to be with him. He needs to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might the entire time. Otherwise, he is defeated before he even starts. And that is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to defeat you while God is trying to give you an assignment. While uh, we read here of the whole armor of God and standing so that we can stand and deal with all the things that the enemy would try to throw at us. Stand because we're strong enough. We're in the strength of his might. And yet, while God is saying one thing, we're dealing with things that people have said about us. We're dealing with how we feel about ourselves because of what has happened to us. And we're unable to cross over into doing and acting upon what he has asked because we immediately are asking ourselves, are we capable? Are we able and if we can't answer that rightfully, then we are not available for God. And that's how the enemy wins. Because in your head, you're thinking, I'm not capable. In your head, you're thinking, I'm not able. But you are. You are finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. If your eyes are looking at uh, uh, the, the land and you're seeing the people that are there where you're destined to go and you're thinking to yourself, I'm smaller than they are, 
then you won't go and take the land. Look at it like this. Instead of looking at it like Joshua and Caleb, look at it like you, you, need, you want a job. If you think that you are lesser than the people who are applying for the same job that you are applying for, you will not go in the strength of his might. Because the strength of his might says that you will win, that you are able, and that it doesn't matter who is around or against or beside. You are endued with strength. You are strong. You are able. But if our identity has been messed with, where the enemy has been able to come in and, and take little parts. Moses had to deal with his speech. The, 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 the 12 spies had to deal with their focus, their eyes, and their belief system. Gideon had to deal with his family. What do you have to deal with? No, that's what that's what the enemy is using. He's he's not going to use. He's not going to use something that's not close to you. St strategically, the enemy is going to use what has been close to you, has been close to you, is close to you, to keep you from believing that you're strong and that you can be in the strength of his might. So his goal is to shut you down before you even get out there on the street, get out there on the track, get out there on the field. His goal is to steal so you're without feet to move. And I know a lot of you probably know this already, but we, but we have to walk like we know this. So when he says, put on the whole armor of God, in verse 11, so that you may be able, again, he says, identity if you do one thing, you become able. Ability. The armor gives us the ability, but what goes on in your head is bigger than the armor that you are wearing. Because if you put on armor and you still don't believe that you are able because you don't identify as being strong in the Lord, under his strength and his might, it doesn't matter how much armor you have on. You will still fall down. But he's saying, if you are strong in the Lord and moving in the strength of his might, therefore, when you put on the armor, you are able. How many of you want to be able? We want to be able because we first begin to think, I am able. I am able. I am able to take down whatever giant, the giant that's in my head that's telling me I can't, that I won't, that I never will be. I take down that giant first and then I can take down any giant that's on the other side of my viewpoint. I got to look inside first. Do that first. Because we all have weakness. We all have areas where we aren't being strong. We are, uh, uh, be, we could be very feeble in one area and strong in another. And that weakness, that feebleness is the area where the where Holy Spirit is saying, I need you to move in. And the enemy has already come in and made that one of the weakest areas of your life. So then you're never able to stand
So we put on the whole armor of God, knowing we are able. When sickness comes upon you, you are able to stand. When you are dealing with things in your in your household, in your marriage, in your relationships outside of marriage, in all kinds of things that we deal with, life, you are able. You have to already know you are able. I want you to know you are able. I want you to know you're able to stand. I want you to know that you're able already to be strong, that you can, if you move like you already are strong, you will find that there is strength for you because you're under the umbrella of being strong in the Lord. It's his might. It's his strength. What did this, it, the scripture says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You're already operating under this umbrella so that you can be strong in his might. You could feel the weakest that you've ever felt. You could feel like your family has denied you. You could feel like you're the you're unqualified. You can feel like how me what you could put all kinds of demands on yourself and say well when I get to this or when I graduate or when I do this and and when this comes together then I'll do that no no you be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might now we put on the armor because now we have a different mindset we know that we can stand if we know that we are able and we know then that we're standing against all of the schemes of the devil. These are the areas where he is um, artfully being cunning. It's, uh, it's described as deceit, which means one thing looks a certain way but it's not. It's it's trickery. The, the word schemes actually means trickery. Trickery. It means cunning. Very similar to what the serpent did when he was talking to Eve. That he was releasing trickery. Releasing the cunningness. Uh, some some authors believe he it was almost like a like a uh, like a Pied Piper, you know, putting them under a spell with his words. But you know that goes on today. Goes on today, where we hear things and we hear things, and we get under the spell of what we've been hearing. It is a, in this, script, this, this particular word schemes, it, it actually means methodia. It's, it's methodia, it's the methods that the enemy is using to come against you. And he'll come against you differently than he'll come against me. But it's all for the same reason, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You have to know that you are strong in the Lord. You have to know that any devil that comes in to your house can be rerouted and cast out by your words that you don't need to call for a priest. Put on the whole armor against it's, it's all the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. Able means it is possible. It is very possible. It is to be of power. Scripture means that word able is to be of power. You are able. It actually is favorable. You are you are going to be uh go through favorable circumstances 
That's what it means that you're that you're able to go through. Able is favorable circumstances for you rather than rather than having to uh, succumb to what the enemy is trying to get you to believe. He's trying to twist things. He's trying to maneuver things around you so that they are and they're all deceitful. It looks right. It looks true, but it's deceit. You have to know who you are. I want you to know who you are. In these last three months, you need to know who you are. You need, you need to know who you are yesterday. But you need to know who you are if you don't. In these last three months, get to know him and he will tell you who you are. But I'm telling you who you are because the scripture says, just be strong in the Lord. And in the strength of his might is how we live. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can have favorable circumstances as you stand. As you stand against whatever the enemy is trying to throw at you. Standing means has to do with a covenant. That word has to do with covenant. I'm able, I'm able to uh, in the presence of other people, in the presence of whatever I'm dealing with, whether I'm before judges, this is what it means, or in or anything else, I am able to stand against the lies and the deceit in the evil way, in the evil day. We already know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But our issue is that we don't know who we are. And so it's difficult to stand. I hope this is making sense for you. Standing has to do with, uh, by definition, it has to do with, uh, it's being fixed and firm. Uh, it is to stand or to be kept intact, whether it's your family or a kingdom. It is to escape in safety. As we talk about the hurricane and all of that's been going on and uh, people that people have had to escape, uh, other people didn't, didn't escape. The scripture is talking about being able to escape in safety. That's why we pray for mercy for those who were not able to escape in safety safety. This word has to do with balance, to set or place in a balance, which is like scales. I'm able, to, you, you, you ever feel like your life, your life is being weighed in the balance? You know, like, am I going to win or am I not? Am I going to make it or am I not? Am I going to get my healing or am I not? The thing I'm contending with, am I going to overcome or or not? This is when we when he when he says that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He is saying that you may be able to set in balance, place it in balance, to weigh things out, and you discover. Oh, that's not false. That's false money. That's on the scales. It's not real. It's not real. So that you have clear understanding. That's about knowing who you are. If you know who you are and you identify with being strong, when you're dealing with deceit and the lies of the enemy, which are meant 
to cause you to be stolen from, to be killed, to be destroyed, you're able to say, oh, wait a second, that's a false balance. The enemy's trying to present a false balance. That's got to go. You ain't got to pray about it. Just make it go. Amen. <clears throat> um, I have a note here that I wrote. It's about uh, setting in place and, and the place and the balance as they would weigh as they would weigh the money, you know, on a scale. This is my scale right here. So as they weigh, weigh the money, this is in early times before the introduction of coin. They used metal. Metals were used to be weighed. And so they would weigh, they would weigh metal with whatever it was that was being, being bought. And then they would, and then they went, eventually went to, to coin, which what that looks like is putting, uh, you know, your, your wheat, your barley, your stuff on a scale and then putting coin on it. And when it balanced out, then that's what you paid based on that's the coin you needed to pay. That's the amount of it you needed to pay for whatever it was on the other side. And we need to. We need to know how to weigh in the balance when the enemy is being deceitful, which he is all the time. And we need to know, okay, wait, I'm not buying into that. We're in a political season, you know that. And as we deal with uh, the power of the air and the power of darkness, both things that are voicing themselves, one creating an atmosphere, the other being a voice in, in, in the atmosphere in order so that the deceit of the enemy or the devil would be made known and then kept alive in an area, in a region, in your city. We start hearing so many different things and you don't know what to believe. You don't know who to choose. It seems like confusion, a lot of chaos and different various things going on because of what's being said and, and repetition. It comes from the enemy because we believe too many times because it's being repeated that it must be true if it's being repeated. And so he uses repetition to wear you down so that you will uh, receive what is being purported in the atmosphere of darkness. So the atmosphere of darkness is being maintained by what we then gravitate and believe and begin to speak out of our mouth because of what the power of the air has released into our ears, into our hearing. We have to weigh in the balance of the thing, the things that we have been hearing and what we are sensing in the atmosphere to determine whether it is the deceit of the enemy or whether it is something that the Father is trying to show us. These things can still look the same but be one either from the father or one from the enemy. We know this. We know this. If we look at the scriptures and Abraham has to hear, he has to hear, but he hears God tell him, you're going to take your son and you need to sacrifice him. So we know that two things are going on in the region at the same time. There is the sacrifice of children already going on and the angel of the Lord tells him to sacrifice his son. You have to know who you are and walk in the strength of his might and weigh these things on the balance and determine if this is God or whether this is the wile or scheme of the enemy. Both of them have to do with killing babies. 
but which one is from God? You need to know. If you don't know, then we, we need to find out. And of course, Abraham passed the test. Abraham passed the test of faith. He passed the test of faith. And that's where I want to, I'm going to end in a moment because it's our faith that scripture says becomes a shield that we are to carry with us with such confidence that it it surrounds who we are so that it extinguishes the flaming darts of the evil one. Look at verse 16. In all circumstances, in all, in all circumstances, I don't know what you're dealing with, but all is part of that. Whatsoever, your daily, anything. This word, this word means all those things. Whosoever. It means all men, all manner, every man. Whosoever, whatsoever. Always. Nothing escapes all circumstances this this listen to this so this shield this is describing a roman soldier's shield he's using it metaphorically and he says uh, taking the shield it is a it is a large door size shield you know a, your a door uh usually a home door is you know 36 inches wide and 80 inches tall right it when you walk to your door if it's if it's 36 inches or if it's 30 inches it usually covers your entire body. It it has to. That's why you fit in the doorway. So it always covers your entire body. Right? That's what he's describing. A shield that is as big as a Roman's. It's as big as a Roman soldier's shield. That's all four cornered. Right? It's not a um it's not like a shield and it's got, you know points and it's four cornered shield. This thing is big. So it's as big as your door and it's used to protect the entire body. Just as the Roman soldiers use these shields to protect themselves from arrows, we are to use our faith to fend off all doubts, all temptations, and all lies of the enemy. You, you, can, you can feel some kind of way behind the shield, but have your shield up. When the enemy is trying to throw doubt at you, have your shield up. And when you're not very certain, have your shield up. When you are very certain. Have your shield up. When you feel like it, have it up. When you don't feel like it, have it up. When you are feeble, have it up. When you are strong, have it up. When you are quoting scripture, have it up. When you don't know what scripture to say, have it up. It is in all circumstances, in every circumstance, in whatever circumstance, in whoever circumstance, you always have your shield of faith up. So the shield 
is in this metaphor, he's using, he's saying the shield and faith are, very, you know, metaphorically the same. And he goes all along with that. He continues and he says, you're dealing with the fiery darts of the enemy. So our, how do we get a nice big shield? <laughs> God, I want a big shield. You know, like I said, like some doorways are 24 inches. You can't get no furniture through that, you know. That's like uh, the size of your pantry sometimes. And some doorways are 30 inches, 32, something like that. And then and then 36 is, is common. You know, you usually get all furniture in there, usually, right? How, how do I get it from 24 to 36? How do I get that little... You know, your shield is only big enough for your hand, just to big enough. How do I get it to go from protecting my hand to protecting my whole body? How do I increase the size of my shield? So we understand first that uh, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It is the conviction of things not seen. It is Hebrews 11, 1. That faith being a shield has to do with the word. Has to do with the word. But, the, but faith is not the word. We have faith. Faith in his word. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction or the evidence of things not seen. To stand on your convictions means you know who you are. If the enemy can steal your identity, you won't stand on your convictions. Then you'll be like the wave of the sea and you're driven and tossed about. And that man shouldn't think or that woman shouldn't think you're going to receive anything from the Lord. And, you, and that's where you ask yourself, if I am praying and believing, but not seeing it manifest in my life, am I sometimes in my belief or am I steady in my convictions? Because if I am like the wave of the sea, then, uh, God, are you going to do it for me? God, do you hear me praying? And then another one, God, I know you'll do it. I know it's already done. I know it's done in Jesus' name. Oh, God, but you haven't done it yet. You know, do you hear me when I cry? That's the wave of the sea, being driven by doubt. That person will not receive. The principle you do not receive if you're up and down. You, you do not receive if you're lukewarm. You do not receive if you're hot one moment and you're cold one another moment in your belief system. You don't, you, you can't, because the scripture won't allow it. When we talk about fiery darts, <clears throat> I love it because uh, we have fiery darts and we have faith, which our faith is fed by the word. While fiery darts, you know, I see fire and darts. I see they, they, these things represent uh, malicious and harmful attacks from the enemy. 
dealing with temptation, doubt, deceit, what we just talked about. So he's, 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 he's throwing darts that are on fire, like causing confusion. They cause division. They are meant to cause destruction. He's throwing these fiery darts, aiming them at your life, causing temptation, causing doubt, causing deceit. And your shield of faith, scripturally, he actually says it is used to quench. I like this. I'm almost done. But you got to get this. It Faith is a shield that is quenching the fire from the enemy. So how do you increase the size of your shield? You increase the size of your shield by increasing the knowledge of the word that you have. Why? Well, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing, hearing, hearing through the word. Faith is therefore built on and strengthened by engaging with scripture. Your shield may only, may only be as large as your hand. We've seen those, or it could be, or it could be big and round, you know, it's getting bigger. Or it could be uh, half a body size. Or it could just be a, like a straight, narrow. Or it could be the size of a door. It, it depends on how much you engage with scripture. And when you engage with scripture, listen to this, Ephesians Ephesians chapter 5, I got to show it to you. So Ephesians, just earlier, Ephesians 5, 26 says, I look at verse 25 because that way you get all of it. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her. Listen, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. He uses, he uses the metaphor of water and the word being the same thing. That when you, when you speak the word over uh, your spouse, as a husband speaks over his wife, the word that you're cleansing her because you're washing her. So then he uses the same example in the next chapter of how water is. It's like I have a shield. My faith shield is built on the water of the word. That's why I'm taking out all, all the fiery darts of the enemy. If you have no word, if you have no word, you have no shield. You could be behind the shield and 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 not really be, you know, very, very confident. But you got your shield up. And that's what he says. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. 
that's built on the water of the word. So you can extinguish, quench. You could suppress all the flaming darts of the evil one in the evil day. So how do you increase the size of your shield, your faith shield? Get in the word. Begin to know what he says about you. Begin to identify with the word. Don't read the word and act like it's over here and you're here. Read the word and allow it to be heard so that you become what you are reading. Not that it's here and you're separate from it. No, be washed and be cleansed and be renewed and therefore be transformed by that word. You are transformed by hearing it, letting it get in your mind. So then you have your sling, you have your shield, you have your spear. You don't allow the enemy to do anything. In all circumstances, I am, I am weighing in the balance. The word in all circumstances in the issue that is before me. In all circumstances, I am allowing the water of the word to be my shield of faith. And therefore, I am able to quench everything that the enemy could possibly be trying to scheme with. Father, we just pray right now that we would recognize every scheme of the enemy. Father, we pray for our identity to be based on who you are. Everything that has been said, you know, I'm talking to you, everything that has been said over your life from someone, somebody that was in contrition with the identity of the word, I bear, I, I said, let that thing be cleansed and removed in Jesus' name. You be cleansed as that is removed in the name of Jesus. You are not who they said that you were. You are who he said that you are. Thank you, Father, for the opening of your word and the scriptures so that we know who we are in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, as we know who we are. We are able to move in the armor that we're able to put on and stand against the enemy in the evil day. And so watch out, watch out. Tell the enemy, watch out, because you're coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen.